Welcome to Megabucks Radio. Conversations with successful entrepreneurs. Sharing their tips and strategies for success. Real world ideas that can put Megabucks in your bank account. Here's your host, Nina Hirschberger. Hello there and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Nina Hirschberger, and today my guest is Kevin Donlin. Kevin is uh, hailing from Minneapolis. We're recording this right during the pandemic, and uh, he tells me there's no snow there, but he's got a lot of ideas for those small business owners that are really hurting right now, and that's the whole purpose I'm I'm doing this for. Uh, Let me give you just a little background on Kevin. He's been online since 1994. In fact, I'm going to want him to tell a little bit of the story right now. Um, He went to, um, he did his own thing, and then he went to FedEx. Uh, through a company he was working with. So, Kevin, let's, let's go back in time. Let's, it's 1984, or I'm sorry, 1994. Tell me, how did you get into the online business? Well, first of all, thanks for having me today, Nan. I'm really excited to exchange ideas. I think I've got seven ideas to share, and between you and me, we'll probably turn them into 14. So I'm very excited <laughs> um, to get going. So, well, I was standing in a bookstore in Tokyo where I worked. It was uh, May of 1994, and I read a PC magazine talking about this thing called the internet and it was this thing and it was worldwide and I go well I got to get back to America and get myself a computer so I you know finished my job where I was working in Tokyo repatriated to the states um, got online in the summer of 94 learned about Usenet which was a series of bulletin boards where you could post you know questions it was sort of like Craigslist and um, I will give you the Reader's Digest version I, I decided to give away you know articles and then at the end offer um, you know, to learn more, send an email to me. And my email address, I believe, was uh, kmd at uh, netcom.ix.com. It was netcom was my internet service provider. Send the, in, and so it, I gave you an article, send me in the, it was about how to find a job on the internet. So if you sent me um, an email, I sent you a sales letter by email. And I think I retailed it for all of $10. I was just an idiot. I had no back end, no upsell. I was just trying to see if I could make, you know, beer money. And I sold several hundred dollars worth of uh, a free uh, a report. Uh, it, I guess you'd call it an ebook now, but it was a text file. And I simply collected information on how to find a job on the Internet. And I sent it to people, got no refunds. You had to pay by check, however, because it was 1994. There was no PayPal. There was no... Uh, you know, authorized.net, you sent me a check and uh, I, I didn't even wait for the check to clear. I was trusting and you had to write your email address on the memo line. So whatever email address they wrote, I emailed them the report the the, the same day, the ebook rather. And that was e-commerce and uh, it was like about uh, November of 1994. And then I was uh, hired by a Marcom agency here in Minneapolis. Our client FedEx had this thing called a website. They needed help with it. So I was their webmaster, a content webmaster from 1995 to 1998. And I started out e- uh, answering five emails a day from customers. We ended up at the end answering over a thousand a day. I had two people working full time under me, just you know, managing the customer service emails for FedEx. So I just uh, was learning. I, I, I liken it to being a mechanic to the Wright brothers because my client uh, at FedEx, his name was Robert Hamilton. He was a true visionary. He put their for their website online. FedEx was featured, you know, they were a media darling in 1995, 1996. They were the only ones with a really useful website. And actually before there was Yahoo, um, there were these things called like AltaVista was a search engine. There was actually an internet yellow pages for several years. I don't know if you remember that, but they, there were so few websites that they printed the website addresses in a book. And you could buy it in computer stores back when there were computer stores. And so, you know, FedEx was listed uh, in the internet yellow pages. I wish I didn't throw all those out. I had a closet full of them. But they're just, you know, really weird artifacts of a, of a time long gone. But, yeah, so I've been selling things online since 1994, uh, copywriting in one form or another since 1994. I just love it. I'm fortunate enough to get paid to do it. And I'm happy to share, you know, any good ideas I can come up with today with you and your listeners. Wow, that sounds great. So let's get right into that. So I know you've got, you said you have seven, so what's number one? Well, number one is simple. A lot of this is simple, but it's not being done. Over-communicate with a relevant message to your prospects, your clients, uh, and the world. This should be a no-brainer, but it's really not. I'm seeing, I mean, how many weeks are we into this crisis now? And it seems like it's like two or three here in America. Maybe it's four. Yep. Yep. Um, I, 
I'm seeing, and you are too, offer after offer after offer, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, or my email inbox, it's just stale. It, it could have been written six months ago. People are saying that there are a lot of businesses, too many, saying nothing at all about the current crisis. They're just you know, continuing to run the same old ads. You look tone deaf when you do this and utterly incompetent. I can't trust you now when things are awful. Why would I give you more money later when things get better? So just be relevant with your message. Don't make predictions like IT bills, you know, because nobody knows how this is going to end, but do give information that you know is going to be true today, tomorrow, and next week. So I guess with your communication strategy, you know, use the Hippocratic Oath, which is first do no harm. Just be giving people information they could use to help themselves today. Now, in my business, I'm posting about three times a day on LinkedIn, for example. I'm doing nothing. I'm selling nothing overtly. I'm giving encouragement to people. Uh, I'm sharing uh, health tips, for example. It has nothing to do with marketing. But I'm watching what gets interacted with, what people share and like and what they ignore. And so this is kind of a living laboratory because, you know, the whole apple cart's been upset. I don't know what people are thinking. We do know that they're scared. We do know that people want encouragement and reassurance. And so I'm posting a variety of things on LinkedIn, and I'm just seeing what's getting the most interaction. And those are going to be future newsletter articles, for example, of the stuff that I know people like. And I just turned one post from last week into a Facebook ad. I had my designer put together a really cool, very visible graphic to illustrate a breathing exercise. It's called box breathing. And uh, the Navy SEALs have used it for years and other top performers. Turns out it calms you pretty much instantly. And so I was, you know, I, I called it, I think the headline I used was coronavirus self-care for entrepreneurs. I got the most interaction of anything by far that I posted on LinkedIn. So I turned into a Facebook ad. It's got uh, over 30 odd shares in just a few days. I'm paying very, very little per click. It's getting interacted with, shared around. I'm building an audience that I can go back to later. So and it's because I'm being very relevant. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm not saying, you know, click here to learn more. Click here to schedule a free converse, consultation. My, and my uh, call to action at the end of that was, you know, my best to you and yours. It's like a Christmas card, for example. So I'm being relevant. I'm communicating very often on LinkedIn, and I'm sending emails almost every day to my list that are just encouraging people. Um, so number one is to just be relevant and just be out there. Don't hide under a rock. So I've seen some people, they've just gone missing, and they're just showing up now, you know, again, two or three weeks into this with something relevant. They've been flat-footed for weeks, and there's just uh, that's just not going to help you. So that's number one. You know, I just interviewed a, a guy who has a carpet cleaning business the other yeah, day. Man. And Brilliant. and what he's sending out to his list and to his is um, ideas for um, fun things to do with your kids at home. Mm-hmm. Little, little, exactly. you know, little things totally different. Nothing about carpet cleaning. And, of course, no offer, no sales pitch, no anything. Just give, give, give value to that. So that's a great idea. Um, mm-hmm. Are you? I'm interested. Are you finding more traction in LinkedIn? Is that why you seem to be talking about LinkedIn versus Facebook? I've always preferred LinkedIn myself. It's it's. I'm I'm a simple person. I don't go into complexity. I know a lot of people preach complexity. You certainly should have a complex back end and sophisticated marketing systems. But uh, I've got people who run Facebook ads for me off and on. But it's just not a place where my prospects are much of the time. For me, LinkedIn is is just more relevant to my prospects who are entrepreneurs of businesses typically doing a million dollars or more in revenue. Not a lot of those people are spending a lot of time on Facebook. That's just my personal preference. But by all means, if you've got a robust Facebook presence, you know, go there. Wherever you're good on social media, Instagram, where I'm not, uh, play where you're good. And that's where you can be uh, over-communicating, and that's where you can be relevant. Well, and play where you're good, but also play where your your prospects are, I suppose, too. Bingo. Yeah. You fish where the fish are, right? So, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. in my fish on LinkedIn. Okay. All right. Let's go to number two. So, number two, you've heard this before. You know, it was kind of a nice phrase for years, retention is the new acquisition. Well, absolutely now more than ever, retention is the new acquisition. It may be the only acquisition. So really do whatever you can to retain the clients or customers you have now. Because when you lose one, boy, are you going to have to work, you know, to get one or two more to replace them. So um, there's a great book by a guy by the name of Brian Kurtz, and it's kind of my strategy for retention. His book is called Over Deliver. And so that's my strategy. It's my motto. If I have any free time, 
you know, if I'm sitting eating a sandwich or walking my dog, I'm just thinking, how can I over deliver? How can I over deliver to my current clients and the prospects who may one day become clients? So very example, I mean, very simple example. I'm asking all my copy client, copywriting clients and I have for over a week, how can I help you? This is a very simple email. How can I help you? What are you working on? What's bugging you? How can I help you? Um, and I had one client of mine. She owns three dry cleaners near Boston. And, I, and I'm working on a completely different project. But I said, you know, separately to all that, how can I help you? She needed an email to send her customers to reassure them that her door, her doors were open and that everything was okay. And so I, I said, fine, I'll write you the email. And her English is not terribly good. She's not a writer. And that's not a sin. It's just a fact. And so I said, I'll write it for you. I did it overnight. I did it really fast. And I did it for free. And I just wrote a little message to her subscribers, her, her members. And I said, have you ever told them that you're a mother? When you've got two kids, this goes back to Vance Morris, who is, you know, giving tips to people who've got kids at home. And she said, no, I've never said that. I said, well, we're going to say it in this email. So my email was like, you know, as a mother, I know you're probably going through a lot at home. You may be trying to tell a commute. You may have the kids at home. And uh, I just was reassuring them that we're open, we're safe, we're sanitary. We can pick up and deliver. You never have to leave your home. And she sent me, and so this was a few days ago. She sent the email. And actually this morning uh, before our call, just a couple hours ago, she sent me uh, an email. I'll summarize her comment. She said, um, Quote, the results are very good, the open rate 33%, um, and only a very few, actually the fewest so far, unsubscribed. Uh, and that was because of customers moving. She said, I got a very good response in two cities, seven to eight requests for delivery on the next day after they got this email. So she was very happy with that. And now do you think she might be inclined to stick with me and not cancel the project I'm working on now? Mm-hmm. Do you think yeah. she might be inclined to hire me again when this is all over? I just generated a, you know, a bunch of revenue above and beyond what she ever expected from me. And I haven't really delivered the other parts of the project that she hired me for. So that's an easy example. Just if I ask, and you can't know unless you ask, uh, how can I help you? She told me, I helped her, and now she's really, really happy. So that's something that anybody can do this minute today, you know, after you finish this podcast. Well, you know, the thing that will bring to mind there is she has a list. Mm-hmm. You know, the saddest mm-hmm. part is when I see business owners who don't have a list. Let me give you an example. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We live in a community. It's a 55 and older community, a Dell Web community. Last Saturday, there was a, a catering company. There's a park. There's about a oh half a mile from our our community. There, the catering company brought a truck, brought a grill, and and had 500 um, um, you know meals that they actually cooked right there. That we all came, stayed in our car. They came and, and delivered the meals to us. But you know what? Never once did they ask for our email. Never mm-hmm. once did they ask for it. Nothing. No yeah. list. Yeah. No list. So, I mean, just the fact, I mean, are you, is it because of you that she has a list? Um, no, she already has a list, a good size list. And uh, she's getting more sales, I know for a fact, than she sent me. Um, because it's always, you're always going to get just a, a quick email rule of thumb. You'll get about 50% of your open rate in the first hour. And about, um, so whatever you get in, in hour one is going to be your total open rate over the length of the, and that, that can go back and forth. That's a rule of thumb. And two, you know, if you get seven to eight uh, orders the next day, you're probably getting another seven to eight, between four and eight over the next coming week or so. So the results will keep coming in for her. But she built that list. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame, you know, that the caterer, gosh, you just feel for, I know for a fact that there's a very new restaurant near my house that's probably going to just shudder. Uh, because they they had a bad location, bad signage out front. They just assumed people would find them. It's just a classic build it and they will come. It's a great restaurant. They have the best service, really good food. Um, but the those poor souls, I can tell you they are not out, you know, list building. They're not doing joint ventures. They're just probably shut shuttered you know, and they'll never roll again. And so yeah, you gotta be list building. Anything that you can do um, now you have to play within the rules. So, you know, people are really wary of even handling paper because the virus can live on paper apparently for three, four, five days. And so if you go up to every car and knock on the window and say, um, you know, can we want to sign our guest book? It may not fly, but they certainly could have 
did they give you bags or something or something? You well, they, you know, it was a little, it was not a napkin or something, but yes, it was like, you know, in a case that was a, a carry out thing. They could have yeah, put something so they on the top put, of it. Exactly. Little you stickers know, go, that go said, you know, to learn about yes. bingo. Yep. Visit our website or Twitter or Instagram. We'll tell you when we're coming back. Would you like to know when you can get another meal? Who wouldn't say yes to that? So you can, mm-hmm. you know, follow us on Instagram or even better text, you know, meet to 9567 and then bam they've got you so a text right. offer on the bag or visit our inst- that, that would have been best because you'd get you know text offers like that you'd get like 90 mm-hmm. percent of the people so yeah they missed the boat i hope they're listening to your podcast <laughs> yeah you know no actually uh, they came back a second time then not to not to the park but they came to another location and uh-huh. i happened to know her, their parents and i i said look I'm a business coach. Um, this is free. doesn't cost you anything. Um, I'm just, you know, whether they do it or not, it's up to them, but let me give you two ideas. One uh, is, just like with McDonald's, so when we go and they bring our meal, would you, you know, today we've got breadsticks for $3. Would you like mm-hmm. us to add that to your order? So now that's an upset. Sure. Mm-hmm. Or, mm-hmm. and then I called it a bounce back. So put something on mm-hmm. top of the carryout case that says, you know, like you said, text this to this number and we'll send you a coupon for yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. No, nothing. Yeah. They didn't do anything. Yeah, so uh, that's that, yeah, that's another podcast. <laughs> that's remedial no. marketing, I suppose, is what's needed. But um, real quick to that idea, uh, uh, back to retaining clients. On Monday, I'm going to be sending out personal gifts to all my top clients. I've got my VA already working on that, my virtual assistant. So personal gifts to all my clients, uh, something related to their college they went to, their favorite sports team. I've got all that data in my database. But um, that's another way I'm going to be retaining. So how many many are you going to be sending out? About three, four, five. These are my high-level retention um, retainer clients. Yeah, it's not 50. But you better believe, you know, I know know what they've received before. I know what they like. I've got one client. I sent him on my steaks once, and he politely said, I'm a vegan. Um, uh-huh. But my daughter liked it, so I said, okay, no more steaks for you. So he's going to get something different. But I know where all these people went to college, and that's an easy one. If you, anyone who's on LinkedIn, they're going to have their school, whether it's high school, college, or they're going to have some sort of an interest. And so I know where, where, where everybody went to college, and they get mugs, they get coasters, they get stuff from their college, and everyone just uh, loves that sort of stuff. It's not hard to do. Uh, if it's personal, you've made the value like five, ten times higher. So, you know, a coffee mug from Michigan State University, <clears throat> where I went, that to me is worth like a hundred bucks and it could cost mm. you ten. Mm. But like a nice coffee mug that says, you know, world's greatest boss, that's worth ten bucks to me. Because it's not personal. So so the, so this is a side tip because this wasn't one of your seven, but it's a great tip. So that's related to retention. Yeah, I guess it's 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 two B. Two A was over deliver. Two B is you know give give personal gifts. So yeah, you're right. So so in other words, identify your top X number, whatever that is. You you've uh-huh. identified three to five. I know um, who matters. We, yeah. yeah, you know who matters. So whatever that number is, I always say identify your top ones, but also mm-hmm. identify the top ones you'd like to have. Exactly. So they can, and, and I and I don't know if this is a woman thing or what, uh, if you sent me a mug from my university, I wouldn't like that. Mm-hmm. But I'm sitting here hanging on to um, some charms that say, uh, believe, uh, protected, mm-hmm. miracle. So right now, those kind of things could be really cool yeah. to, to send to somebody sure. um, mm-hmm. on, a, on a keychain. So it could be a man or a woman and stuff. But yeah, mm-hmm. no, terrific, terrific. So yeah, what's number three? So number three, um, it's really just offer value first and foremost. Um, create value. As entrepreneurs, we only get paid when we create value for others. If we don't create value in the marketplace, we go out of business and we have to take a job working at Home Depot or wherever. So, you know, offer value, create value first. It's just kind of, you know, in, in the old days, and it's still relevant, but we, we would talk about educational marketing. To tell people how to make an intelligent buying decision. Give them information. Chet Holmes is really good at this with his book, mm-hmm. The Ultimate Sales Machine. If you can set the, you know, the buying criteria by showing people what to look for, how to be smart consumers, you'll probably get them. I'm going to say that in this time, maybe we want to, 
emphasize encouraging marketing instead of educational marketing. Just be encouraging to people because there, again, I'm using LinkedIn as a reference because I'm there all the time. I'm seeing people like when the jobs report came out yesterday, 3 million jobless claims, you know, one guy posts, get ready for the, you know, the, the S storm is going to hit. The S is hitting the fan and OMG, this is awful. This is the worst ever. I don't want to see that. For Mm -hmm. crying out loud, I don't want to see this chicken little stuff. Yeah, it's bad. I don't need to be told. And don't be political. Someone on Facebook was sharing, you know, this message from a a doctor in the ER. And it was, you know, as bad as you would think it is. And at the very end, it said, and if you voted for Trump, who's, you know, helping to kill us all, I hate you with every fiber of my being. And you don't have to like Mm -hmm. Trump. But, yeah, I don't need to be hearing hatred from a doctor. Mm -hmm. I just lose a little respect for doctors because of you, even though that's not the case. So it's just don't be emotional. Don't be political. Don't be a doomsayer. Just encourage people crying out loud and resist the urge to sell overtly or put strings on your freebies. I'm just giving away stuff. I'm giving away health postings, tips on, you know, relaxation, stress reduction, and I'm also giving out success stories like I'm doing here with you. The same stuff that, you know, we're talking about, I've written about several of these. That's why I can talk and talk and talk. And so I'm just giving people examples of stuff that's working. Well, by doing that, I'm giving them hope. And they're going to want to listen to me right now because who wants to listen to another talking head, you know, with doomsaying stuff? It's just um, don't do it. So I saw one guy, he made an offer. To, the, to his email list, I'm on it, and it was this fabulous resource worth like twenty thousand dollars, and it's free, free, free. Made a big point out of. I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you, and all you have to do to get it is to go here and schedule a client consultation or whatever. It's a sales pitch. Everyone mm-hmm. and their dog knows that's a sales pitch for crying out loud. So I mean, immediately I just go, you nitwit, you know, you muppet, and uh, so I lost respect for this guy. And, you know, no, there is a, there is a catch. I've got to get on the phone with one of your sales guys. If you're going to do that, give away the $20,000 resource first, for example, because that would be extraordinary. And right now we're in the middle of extraordinary times. So it's perfectly valid and it's going to get attention. It's going to get passed around. And then at the end, you can have a soft offer. If you like that, we'd like to help make this relevant for you. We'll answer your questions. There's no sales pitch. There's no obligation. It's just a friendly conversation because everything's changed right now. We want to make, help you make sense of this. Right? I just wrote the call to action there, and you can write an even better one up sure, because I know what a good mm-hmm. copywriter you are. So the point is, if you're going to give value, don't put any strings on it at all. It's just really stupid. You look, um, you look like a jackass. I know I'm getting my 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 danders up a bit, my hackles. I'm just, it just ticks me off that people just, you know, want to put strings on stuff. So I have a client, um, Steve Adams. He's CEO of uh, Tiger Neuroscience. And he's a really busy guy, but he's posting fantastic blog posts about, you know, relaxation and stress reduction. Because if your stress system, if you're stressed out, it's going to hurt your immune system. And if your immunity is damaged, if your immunity is compromised, you are more likely to get sick. That's the last thing you want to do right now. So Steve Mm -hmm. is really helping a lot of people out with some really good resources. Um, full disclosure, I'm a, I'm an investor in this company, but I, I have to say that, you know, Steve's doing a great job. And so uh, there are no strings at the end. It says, if you'd like to talk to one of our, uh, our, our team members, uh, and it's not a sales call, just if you want questions or answers, we're making them available to you. That's the way to do it. Give that value first. And if they like it, then, you know, make a soft offer. That's my, my, my recommendation. That's what I'm seeing is just, it's not going to piss people off because you don't want to do that. Well, you know, right now, I mean, I just before this call, I had another call with one of my top clients, and uh, I do a, a printed newsletter for them on a quarterly basis. I do all the design, all the writing, all the everything. And they said, you know, right now what we'd like to do, and it's an eight-pager, uh, right now we'd like to increase that by two and four pages. How much would that cost? Mm-hmm. And I said, nothing more. It's my mm-hmm. gift, mm-hmm. not only to you, Bingo. but it's to those small business owners who I really want to, you know, uh-huh. I... I I, I'm, I'm not into making more money at this moment. My, my, you know, it's, it's giving back. It's giving that value like you're talking about. So it'll exactly. come back around. It'll come back around. We know it will. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, I'm going to just diverge for a quick second here. The, the pharmaceutical company Merck, M-E-R-C-K, they uh-huh. are famous for giving away their drugs. They gave away a drug that cured millions of people of something called river blindness, which is a horrific disease. And I believe they also gave stuff away 
um, in the 50s as well. River blindness drug was given away, I think, in the in the 90s. So the point is, this is a multi-billion dollar company who gives away, they didn't say call for a free consultation and then we'll cure your river blindness for crying out loud. They gave the drug away and it came back to them. And Merck is like one of the only pharmaceutical companies that you could reasonably say is beloved or at least admired um, because that's, you know, part of their corporate strategy is to just uh, give value where it's needed and, you know, the money will come. So, yeah, yep. I'm echoing what you said. And so if I could just come and do your interview for a minute, and I wanted to tell you that you just anticipated uh, tip number four uh, when you just said the two pages are free because tip number four is offer more value than you ever have before. Mm. And that's what you did. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, and you know, that's, I, uh, I, so some ways to do this, it's not hard, expand your, yes, you're going to have to work harder by the way, but you know what, you're probably not sleeping so much anyway. And it beats, uh, you know, every hour you work and don't watch CNN or Fox, it's going to, it's going to add to your lifespan, trust me. So offer more value than you ever have before. Examples of doing this, expand your hours, relax your cancellation policy. I have a client, um, they're called the Texas Baseball Ranch. Um, Ron and, and, and Jill Woolforth. They're you know world famous. They have the very best pitching uh, coaching um, place on earth, and they've relaxed their cancellation policies because some parents may just have to cancel in good conscience. They don't want to fly their kids to Texas. So you know, working together, we came up with a, a relaxation on the policy. You can just reschedule for later, no fees, right? So that's another thing you can do is eliminate unnecessary fees. I know Delta, I believe, and all the airlines are letting you cancel without the, the penalties. You, you can't get your money back, but you have a credit for a year. So eliminate unnecessary fees, expand your hours. Uh, and, and a big one that anyone can do, be flexible on pricing. Do not lower your prices, but yes, consider payment terms. And my last two clients that I got on the last 10 days, um, both were really hesitant for my fees. So I said, all right, uh, you know, and this is sales 101. You know, whenever some, any time anyone says, ooh, I can't afford that, I said, well, if, you know, if price wasn't an object, um, you know, would you go with this? Would this make sense? And he said, of course, I really want this. I said, well, let's make it affordable. So you can't afford X. Well, what if we broke it down into three monthly installments of, of Y, uh, you know, 30, 60, 90 days apart, make it easy on your budget? Would that work for you? Both of them said yes. So I didn't lower my price. I simply gave them installments. And nice. that's what you got to think about doing. Anyone who can do this. There's no one who can't. So the temptation is to have a sale, 70% off. No, no, no. Because you've trained people to expect low prices from you. Yeah, so just exactly. be flexible on your terms. No, um, and I, and so I'd much rather, just like with this newsletter, I'd much rather give it than give a discount. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I'd rather because you know that is is a gift as opposed to I'm cutting my prices. Exactly. So mm-hmm. so what's your next tip? So I got three more. Uh, number five is be available. Um, this is related to expand your hours, but it's 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 a bit more in depth. I have a client, um, Dr. John Meese. He's founder of. Uh, the team training institute. He trains at dentists and how to, you know, build better practices. And as you know, everyone knows, nearly every dentist office in America is closed right now to anything uh, but emergency procedures. And you you can see this on Facebook. I saw an actual message. People are calling their dental offices, and the message on the machine starts with "We're closed," and um, they hang up. Because people want a root canal, you know, today they're in agony. And the message is, we're closed. Well, if they had listened longer, it might have said, but if you have an emergency, you can dial the dentist. Where people are hanging up before they get to that part. So when I mean be available, you know, I'm talking to my clients on Saturdays and Sundays for the duration of this thing and consider mm-hmm. being available to them. But make, the, make it very clear to people who are calling with in a panic who are worried and in pain, they need help right away, you know, make sure your message tells them at the very beginning that you are available for them. So these dentists were scaring everybody away because their message in the first five seconds was we're closed right now, even though they would have accepted you for emergency treatment. So Dr. Mises is training his members to change their voicemail greeting to, if this is an emergency, um, here's the phone number of the dentist. Call his cell phone right now. Dr. Smith is at blah, 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 blah. And then it would go on to you now, if you, if this is not an emergency, please know that 
you know, we're closed except for emergency procedures. We expect to open in three weeks. We hope we do, but blah, blah, blah. So the important stuff was out front. It was available for the people who needed it. And this resulted in from just one doctor that we know of, he did 15 emergency patients in two days after his office was closed. Now other doctors wow. were not getting those 15 patients. And that's a full schedule for anyone mm. who knows dentistry, 15 procedures in two days. Uh, so it's because he was available. And in fact, his team was answering their phones. This is, this is related to that. It wasn't just a good voicemail message, but during the day, his teams were answering the phones. So answer your so phone. So that could be a, that could anything. be a, yeah, that could be a, a, a another tip. I suppose it could be, you know, right yeah. Myself, I don't answer my phones. Uh, that's yeah, just I the way either. I roll. And um, I haven't answered my phone since 1997. <laughs> Even my fiance okay. can't reach me unless she comes and at me from like three directions. But it's, it's worth considering. You know, if, you, if, you, if your business is such that you can do rush jobs, consider answering your phones. Or just have make sure your phones are answered, if at all humanly possible. Don't let it roll to voicemail. And if it does roll to voicemail, make sure... For you know, for the love of mud, that your message is relevant to the people who need it right now. So just review your voicemail messages, uh, but answer your phone if you can. And it's all about being available to people. Well, that's a that's a great tip. In fact, if if that dentist still had some of their employees and they hadn't had to lay them off temporarily, I mm-hmm. mean, what is that person doing at home? They could be answering live. Hi, this is Sue. Right. You know, thanks for calling. Exactly. You know, mm-hmm. what's, what can we do for you today or something instead of saying mm-hmm. we're closed? No, great idea. Right. Yeah. All so, right, next tip. All right, a couple more to go. Uh, number six is simply adapt. And this is a golden opportunity for all of us. This is, a you know, an interview in itself because adapt, you know, who are you? Just reassess and adapt. Who are your clients? What are you selling? Where are you selling it? What are your prices? Review everything. But in this narrow sense, adapt means simply change your promotions change your your service offerings to to work in today's environment. So you were talking earlier about the carpet cleaner. He's a friend of mine. His name is Vance Morris. And he told me, I don't know if you said anything in detail on your podcast, but he sent out an email. This is probably two weeks ago now that the subject line was uh, free toilet paper. And that was very relevant when the first wave of panic buying of toilet paper was going on. And he made a brilliant offer. He said, uh, uh, free roll of toilet paper with your next carpet cleaning job, and we'll do a 19% discount in honor of COVID-19. And he said mm. he got um, three jobs the next day, which was, you know, pretty lucrative. And I'm sure he got another two or three in the coming days. You're always going to get more after your first day. So that was an example of him adapting. He'd never had a free toilet paper offer. No one on earth has ever done that, probably. But he did. Um, the other one was a really clever one. And uh, this was sent to me by Darcy Juarez, another one of my clients. She saw on Facebook that there's a, a, a photographer. This is just so smart. So photographers, you got a photography studio, guess what? You're out of business for now. So she came up with something. She calls it porch portraits. She'll come to your house, stand out in front of your porch, never get closer than six feet to you, and take their picture of you and your loved ones on your porch during the, the lockdown. And it was being, you know, passed all over Facebook, super clever. And it was like, you know, this is a memory, uh, you know, you'll never forget, you know, the coronavirus anyway, why not, you know, memorialize it, have it on, on, as a picture. So porch portraits, I just thought that was brilliant. And that's an that example of adapting your, adapting your offer, fishing where the fish are. Everyone's at home. Um, so you got to find a way to get there. And I just, you know, I just love the idea of porch portraits. You know, I think if, if, if something comes out of this, one of the best things will be is to have multiple streams of income. Let's go back to a mm-hmm. chiropractor concept. You know, mm-hmm. if all that chiropractor does is, you know, adjustments um, mm-hmm. and, and didn't have any kind of supplements, I mean, they could mm-hmm. have a, an immune building or boosting supplement package Absolutely. that they could sell online, right? They could, Absolutely. They could be that. I mean, that would be a hot ticket. In fact, I have a very good friend, very a good client who has a vitamin shop and they are selling twice the amount of any of the biggest days that he's ever had huh. Huh. twice uh-huh. like, yeah. come home exhausted because everybody wants all the supplements now. Well, what if they'd had that? What if that's mm-hmm. what you ended up transitioning to? Sure. Um, and that's, so I, I mean, yeah. 
real quick, I've got two other stories. You just made me um, remember them. I have a friend who's a personal trainer. He's always wanted to do more online stuff because when he's coaching people one-on-one, he's trading time for money. So yeah. well, guess who's delivering a whole bunch of you know Zoom video workouts to his customers and he's letting them share it. He was also, I don't know if he could still do this. He's uh, near Waco, Texas, but I was telling him that he should have social distancing workouts and have people, you know, spray paint uh, little circles in the park, have a boot mm-hmm. camp out there, six foot circles. You, you stay in your circle the whole time and don't go near anybody. I don't think he did anything with that because things are changing so fast. Um, but yeah, go online with your stuff. Um, and darn it, I've just forgotten the other one. Uh, it, maybe it'll come to me, but, um, you know, again, adapt your offering and, and go, oh, I, this, is a, this is the other one. It's a tutor, one of my new clients. He's a tutor. And he used to meet people mostly uh, in the home. And just luckily, he started transitioning to video about uh, uh, last year or so. Well, guess who's so busy that he has to hire tutors? He's never had to hire staff. He's hiring people left and right. And his clients are wealthy people in the near in Silicon Valley. They can afford this. And I'm writing postcards that are going out. Um, and I, I'm working from memory here, but the headline is how to uh, educate your children at home without losing your sanity. And and it was really easy. And I'm a parent, and I'm um, and I've got <laughs> teenage daughters here, and I can I know what insanity is, believe me. And I'm um, I found a news story in the Financial Times, and there was a little pull quote that said, uh, "Parents are losing their minds." And so I made that a prominent you know sub headline on the on the postcard. And um, he's uh, we're just starting to mail it next week, actually. But I already revised his website with a similar message, and he's just never been so busy. He can't keep up what? with the demand because he's, a, he's a video way? tutor. Yeah, he's a video tutor. Well, what if you were a teacher? Uh, exactly. My son-in-law is an English teacher. What a great! I mean, I, I'll, I'll work with your student right now. Yeah, we'll tell him that there's a booming market online. Everyone, the people, people are clamoring to do the video conferencing. You can do it as a Zoom video or what have you, go to webinar. But yeah, if you can deliver it by video, now's the time. And so this guy is going to have a very strong business. He's very, very good at what he does. He 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 he'll often tutor like two generations. Um, not two generations, two or three different siblings within a family for like 10 years. He's so good. So all these people he's getting now, he's going to keep. And his business is going to be strong uh, for years to come. So he's adapting. So adapt is number six. Does he think that there's going to be more homeschooling out, coming out of this? I would say that, well, I, I, I can't predict. I don't know. Um, there is a need right now for kids to be educated at home because all the schooling yeah. is going to transition to distance learning because no one's going back to school this year. Sorry, not going to happen. Yeah. And yeah. Um, whether it's, you know, what he does is tutor people so they can do, he tutors kids to help them do their, sco- their regular homework. Um, so above and beyond what they're getting from their class, which is often going to be garbage, to be honest. I'm a former teacher, and they're just caught flat-footed. They've been given just a couple of weeks to start teaching entirely online. The quality is not going to be mm-hmm. great. So there's going to be a mm-hmm. booming market for tutors to fill in, you know, the quality gap. And my client is just perfectly positioned. Well, and the beauty about it is it doesn't matter where they live. It's anywhere no. in the world. Yeah, no, fantastic. that's a great. Well, my son actually uh, works for a heating and air conditioning controller company. Mm-hmm. So they so they manufacture um, things for the heating and air conditioning industry, and they're also a distributor of different things. Well, five years ago, he started working there as a videographer, uh-huh. uh, taking videos and stuff, and he has parlayed that into an entire online training. Uh, digital delivery kind of um, thing. He's got this $25,000 mm-hmm. studio now and stuff. Last night, cool. so they're in the midst of their uh, training. So last night, one of the companies they partner with to do training to these heating and air conditioning company guys mm-hmm. um, is losing a half a million dollars a month because their model was to have all these heating and air conditioning guys fly in for their oh in-person training that they oh. can't do right now. So right. that trainer from that company came to where my son works, and uh-huh. they delivered the training virtually online to 260 people last night, wow. the most they'd ever had. And it was a two-hour. Uh, it was free. So you would think free they would have bailed. They didn't. Mm-hmm. 
And of the 260 people, they even had 170 questions. So there was engagement wow. even. And yeah. so, yeah. So here's the message, I think, uh, personally, out of this whole thing. Mm-hmm. There are things going to be birthed and created that will literally explode and change entrepreneurs' lives mm-hmm. if they become, you know, if, if they focus on it, just like your, your tutor friend. I mean, it's mm-hmm. brilliant. It's mm-hmm. brilliant. Yeah. No, I'm just um, a lot. If you can just get through this, you know, and we're giving the ideas now. I mean, I just came up with another one. Right? I'm going to give you eight. So I'll give you number seven okay. and then number eight. Okay. Number seven, I just got it looking at my notes. Number seven is uh, gift certificates. Sell future products, future services. You can't deliver it now. Sell people gift certificates. Say, I'll say uh, $100 worth of stuff for 75 bucks. Or, you know, you come up with the, the offer. But if people can't buy from you now because it can't be physically delivered, um, give them a gift certificate or sell it at a discount in the future. You'll get cash flow coming in. Perfect example of this, I'm a, a customer of a company called The Ready Store. They sell really good, really reasonably priced uh, freeze-dried food. I'm an amateur prepper. have been for years. And I was... Um, some some of my food had been damaged in a flood, so I, I didn't replace it like a dummy. And so I needed some like three weeks ago, and I bought, you know, X hundred dollars worth of stuff. It's not going to get to me for like a month or two. But you know what? I would have paid for it even knowing it wasn't going to come right away because I just needed the stuff. And they actually had a sale on some stuff. So they did this without knowing. You know, they discounted. And they didn't tell me till I had shopped, you know, until I had checked out, which kind of ticked me off. But, you know, I'm back order on this after I had clicked the, the buy button, not thrilled with that. However, I did get a really good price on stuff. They could have doubled or tripled the price. They did. So the, the lesson here is, you know, sell future goods or services at a discount now so that you get cash flow now and you can survive until you can actually deliver that stuff. So, so come up with some sort of a discount or some sort of a scheme, a scheme to sell uh, stuff in the future uh, at a discount. Call it a gift card, a voucher, whatever. But uh, that's number seven that I just thought of. Well, and gift cards are really good because they're, co- you know, there's what's called breakage. Exactly. So, so mm-hmm. let's sell, say you sell five hundred dollars worth of gift cards. Well, maybe only two hundred gets even actually redeemed. So not exactly. only do you get the cash now, it mm-hmm. could be worth even more. So good. Okay, so you got mm-hmm. one more for us, huh? One more, and I hope I haven't overshot our time frame. No, here, we're good. Number, we're good. Number eight is never forget you can't run your business from the hospital. Right. Uh, Translated, this means take care of you, prioritize your health, Um, because I'm seeing people who are suffering and it's totally unnecessary. They're depressed. They're just locked up in their office without getting outdoors. You need to do as much exercise as you can. Sleep is critical. It's never been more important. I'm getting six, seven hours of sleep. I'm actually sleeping better the last week than I have in years, and I've never been under more stress. It's because I'm prioritizing my sleep. I'm actually doing all those things that we were told, right? I don't look at my cell phone for the last hour before I go to bed. We've all been told that. So many of us are actually freaking doing it. I am. And I can tell you, just last night, I slept six hours in a row. That has happened like once in the last year. And it, and it happened two days ago, which was the other time I did it. And so sleep, when you wake up after six, seven, eight hours of good sleep, you're a completely different person. So prioritize your sleep, your meditation, your breathing exercises, your hydration, anything that you can do to take care of you has never been more important right now. Because once your immune system is compromised, um, we've all been sick getting back from a trip. You know, we went to a coast and we lost hours of sleep and we got home on a red eye and we got sick. You're always going to be exposed to germs in an airplane or in an airport, but you got sick because you just uh, were exhausted and your immune system was compromised. You can't afford that now. Just sleep, I guess. If I had to boil number eight now, it's just sleep and the rest of it can take care of itself. Breathe directly, belly breathing, meditation, exercise, just get rid of stress uh, and take care of you. And then the, the business has a much better chance of doing well. So that's number eight. Kevin, this was fabulous. I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, I'm sure it's going to help a lot of people. If somebody wants to get a hold of you, if they want to check out your services, where, where, where should they go? So they should visit my website. My company is called Client Cloning Systems. I, I gave it that name because I want to help you get more clients like your best clients. And my website is uh, www.clientclloningsystems.com. That's client cloning systems.com folks can go there 
learn about what I do, and you can request a free client cloning kit, which comes to you by U.S. mail, which you may want to, you know, put in a pot of boiling water to disinfect fine, but you can also download a digital version of it right away. Uh, so request a free client cloning kit, which I think you'll love. It's got some of my very best ideas. It's at clientcloningsystems.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. So this is Nina Hirschberger. Until next time, remember, now is the time to take max of action. Not tomorrow, not next week. It's now. I'll talk to you another time. Thank you for listening to Megabucks Radio with Nina Hirschberger. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or to listen to past episodes, visit megabucksradio.com.